Well, uh, uh, I guess uh, as a talented soccer player that I was, <laughs> I had a brother who uh, who uh, always uh, kept pushing me. You know, I had to to start playing uh, guitar and stuff, and uh, pretty soon I was, uh, you know, all all worked out, but music scene and and everything, and uh, and. And suddenly I realized as I, I sit home just practicing on guitar and, and trying to write stuff that that um, the things that you, you come up with uh, sometimes help you with uh, what, what problems you may have. And as far as I know, I don't think you can do that by playing football and soccer and stuff. So uh, it was a kind of like a therapy thing and, uh, and uh, suddenly it, it was... Uh, I woke up one day and I had a need to create music and from there it just went on and uh, that was you know 15 years ago I think so so uh, it's been more like a lifestyle thing right now and I think it does for all uh, all people who, who make music it's uh, important so to by choosing therapy instead of football you chose uh, yeah I chose the guitar just and like stuff, you, you, know? you, you didn't like you the chose away money on your knee yeah, of Falling course. Uh, my my family was all, uh, you know, uh, you don't make a you, you can't make a living in, in in music business today, but but some people do, and uh, I think. All the other kids from the and room. we end with them, no? In your place, we're just bigger than you. What so pushed me to start? <laughs> what pushed me to start was that I had a vision of recording an album, sometime in the future, and I guess I got addicted. What about you, <laughs> Mr. Trail? <laughs> uh, well, like I said earlier, uh, I had a vision of recording an album sometime in the future, and uh, that was the main reason why we started Green Connection in the first place, because we had a vision of recording an album together. And when the band split up in '92, we still hadn't uh, accomplished uh, that goal. So by reforming the band in late '98, we kept on following that dream we had. Beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Public demand. <laughs> uh, they couldn't face the pressure. I guess that it's a personal question and I think the right persons to answer that question is the Potteri Twins themselves. As far as I know they stepped down from the stage they were on concerning music and they were just taking everything one step back and, and taking everything more slow than they have been the last few years. And I think they needed some time off from music and I know that they started a little bit now on solo projects and uh, I hope that will work out for them. Okay, I hold on to it for this one. Uh, the Batera Twins are comfortable with making music and don't have any demands playing live and stuff like that so they 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 just want to, to keep it low both in uh, attention from the audience and for themselves. They, they live for the music, but when it comes to live shows and the progression this band is meeting, they wouldn't be able to do that. Sexy, seductive, passionate, That's super melodrama. Super metal. Yeah, that sums it up. What, what would you call it? I, I think it's, uh, first and foremost, it's uh, progressive music. And uh, we, I keep on reading on the internet and stuff like that, that the, this is a band inspired by like Pink Floyd and stuff like that. And uh, I talked to Chort about it. He never really listened too much to Pink Floyd. <laughs> so, so uh, I think uh, the music is it, it is progressive. It's a mixture between uh, uh, different styles. It's certainly got uh, 
a metal edge uh, rock and roll. It's it's the, yeah. It's not. It's not just heavy metal, and it's not just rock and roll. It's so much uh, different. And it's difficult to really describe because it changes from each album. It has changed, and uh, I think one word that sums it up pretty good is personal. It uh, reflects personal feelings. Uh, I mean, it's like um, the band is uh, put together with. Uh, old time friends come years and years back, but with completely different backgrounds. Me and George, for instance, is from the extreme metal scene, well, staying. Kjetil is from a more common kind of music. But for me, it's only good music. Yeah, we have no idea how it's gonna how it's going to develop in the future. Like George said, it's personal and we all change every day, almost, I guess. Yeah, we will see what happens. We are aging uh, fast. Michael <laughs> said that he would uh, like to add some jazz into the uh, incarnation. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. And Polish has some jazz. electronica visions for the band, so we will see. The pop guru. Yeah. Electronic jazz. What about you, Bjorn? I don't know. <laughs> Just along for the ride, basically. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, concerning progression. Uh, that's uh, a thing with not only the musical style, but also the the changes from album to album. It's progressive, just like us people, and uh, both the music and the style and the writing and the band is a progressive unit, kind of. I think. Do you believe an album is like a picture of the composer's situation when he wrote the album? Mm, maybe, but I think the uh, end result is more like the... Uh, when you write an album or you write music, it's like in the moment, but when you, as, you, as it progresses in the studio and other guys are putting on stuff, their stuff, it tends to be like a, a unit or a universal thing for all the yeah. peoples involved in a way. And that's cool. With everyone's personal touch. Mm. I don't know if that's a reincarnation thing or, or what it is, but uh, I've been in reincarnation on both the uh, Light of Day album and The Blessing in Disguise. And uh, uh, there's a lot of things going on in the studio which nobody had thought about before. Yeah, that's Not gay stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it is uh, evolving in the studio as well, and yeah. <coughs> and uh, we don't go to the studio with a, you know, a, a whole album uh, finished off. No, we, we didn't. We didn't rehearse bef uh, before the the recording of the Blessing in Disguise album together. Many bands uh, rehearse for two or three years on every little detail of every every song, but uh, but uh, the songs were made kind of in the studio, even though we had a pre-production before. When I did a recording, it was the first time I ever played the songs. Then you get this spontaneous feel on yeah. it, more or less. You're not tired of the songs, you know, it's the first time you play them and you go in with a more uh, enthusiastic feel or something. When, I came, in, when I came into the studio, I hadn't heard the song. When I got the finished CD, it was the first time I heard the song, both on Blessing and on uh, Lights of Day, so... Surprises. <laughs> it's a key thing. Hey! Well, yeah, it's yeah, more yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
if the band achieves commercial success, it's because of the music that we play at heart. I think it would, uh, I think it would be wrong anyway to to change music because someone tells you to do it, and that would take away my pleasure of doing music. I think. I don't know any other way of writing music than the way I'm writing music currently, so I don't think I could adjust to write something more commercial to make the band more successful than I'm doing today. Also, you don't think about compromising when it comes to music, because if you have a certain amount of success in one band uh, and you don't want to take away the focus, uh, just uh, of, on, on the success, you know, you, you keep writing songs and you keep uh, playing uh, if you have success. So, so you don't you don't worry about things around it. You just play. I think you just want to, to create all, all the way. The biggest success is appreciations from the audience that actually likes the stuff that you write from heart. That's the main point. Yeah, and I think that's been. The formula that Greek Nation has been using so far that we write something that we feel is representative for each of the composers and not because a label expects something or the press expects something and that's why we've been changing so drastically from each album because we don't have any worries that we will become a successful band just because of a certain style we like to change because we change. Okay, you can go ahead. <laughs> no. uh, metal is defining myself as an individual, individual in the age of 29. I got into metal when I was 11, 12 years old, and of course it's uh, had a huge impact on everything I do. And of course my musical way of uh, the world, nah, fun, good. Uh, <laughs> you also have a song about it. No, uh, it's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less, it's, I think the, the the music itself it's uh, a huge uh, important factor in my life, uh, bigger than I probably think myself. But uh, and the metal music has always been the, the music style I've been most interested in during the years. But yeah. I also have the I also enjoy different kinds of music, of course. But I define myself as a metal musician. Bottom line. For me, it's. Uh, I think we might be a little bit uh, different in that aspect because oh, for, really? for me, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's. Uh, it's only one kind of music, and that's music. I don't care if it's called classical or if it's called jazz or folk music or metal. Uh, I enjoy good music, and for me, there's a lot of good metal music, but uh, uh, I don't really care about the style, what uh, other people call it. That's, well, that's music. What you call no, that? Uh, applause. That's, what you call that? <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's, that's music, music too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely music. Well, uh, 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 music is, uh, uh, it's what you hear, basically, and you can't, uh, you can't, so m metal music. For example, uh, the the lines, uh, very thin lines that, that you know, uh, metal music and rock music and pop music and stuff like that. You know, rock and roll can be heavy metal to a peep, to a guy that's 80 years old. You know, you know, pop music is heavy metal to him. So basically, it's very hard to to define it. But uh, uh, like Yetil said, it's not important what it is. It is his music. And uh, it's just uh, put it put in glasses or put in you know people people make uh, make up this kind of names for the music if it is punk or rock and roll or metal music thrash metal uh, everything so it's just names.
there's a diversity of taste is also involved uh, inside the band, but I think uh, most of us has a metal background some way or another. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't really there. <laughs> I was only <laughs> Night, <laughs> neither of us sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but one of the most fascinating stories uh, might be uh, with the saxophone player. The the strange part in the uh, about 30, 35 minutes into the song, uh, the part with the saxophone and Sinne doing some strange vocals part which I really love. I think that's one one of the parts on, on the album which is the, the most controversial, I guess. People either love it or hate it, I think. But even, yeah, uh, when we recorded that, uh, I think there was, uh, the saxophone player, what's his name again? Maud Orson. Maud Orson. Hmm? Maud Orson. Maud Orson, yeah. Maud Orson. Yeah, yeah. He went... Uh, Good job. Into the recording room first, I think, uh, and he knew what uh, what do you call that? Uh, a key. What key? Yeah. Mm. Only, only really, what key he was going to play in, and uh, and for how long he was going to play. So he did some stuff, and uh, he went back back out, and uh, the day after maybe or something, sooner came in and got the exact same uh, key. Yeah, of course, okay. the same key, the same message. And she did her things without, without knowing what the saxophone player did, and we just put it together in the end. And it really, I think it really, really worked out. Yeah, that's a cool thing to do because. Uh, I re <laughs> yeah, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, we recommend that. Yeah, I recorded the drums for Light of Day, alone. Nobody in the band was there. Only me and uh, Heino. I was I went down in uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, and I was finished about uh, eleven o'clock in the evening. That was my part of that album. Yeah, I was uh, I was uh, I was given the, the pre-production to the song from uh, short, and uh, there was already bass lines on them. Uh, I remember uh, uh, it was uh, drums and guitar and uh, and a uh, bass. No vocals, no, no, not, nothing, nothing much. But, but then I heard the um, bass, uh, and I, I thought that I could maybe do some, some work about it because I think it was Andre, the producer, who, who I played the bass on it. I know. And um, so I was, I was down there for a couple of days and did the bass, and that was it. So, oh, it was really a <laughs> strange production, I think, because you know there was about like t ten or fifteen small children between the age of three and six or something in the studio at once. So I think uh, the producer got a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yeah, he's never been the same after that. Yeah, I had to buy candies and uh, sodas and whatever to keep them quiet. They weren't. Um, and they, they flipped his studio upside down because they were looking for money within the couch. <laughs> so he came out from the recording room and everything was just messed up because all the children were uh, looking for uh, lost coins. And the first attempt to record the children's choir was uh, with the whole group, first with uh, just uh, the boys and then the girls. But uh, some of them were singing out of key, uh, very, very mildly. Very, very. Uh -oh. So we had to, to fewer them down, so it was like from maybe eight boys in the first group, then we went down to five, then three, and then just take one and one and one <laughs> to hear which one was out of key. And uh, when it came to the girls part, it was a small girl. I think she was barely three years old. And she had a really passion. She really wanted to sing and she wanted to learn, but she was totally out of key. But we struggled a little extra with her because I think she ended up being the loudest in the mix of the, the children's choir because she, her voice was so unique and we just had to work a little bit extra with, uh, with her voice. There's no auto tune or something like that, but um, 
if you listen really careful, you can hear someone being told out of key, but that's the, <coughs> the smallest girl of them all. A good thing also is uh, uh, it was a good idea that didn't happen. Uh, it was uh, Jota and the producer was going to the mental asylum with a sampler and just like yeah. record the insane people, but it didn't happen. I don't no, we, record I didn't we recorded the cinema instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that was figures. for that part, actually. Uh, no, I was, uh, I was a bit too afraid to go to the asylum. You meet up with the uh, whole, whole, whole strangers, you know. <laughs> 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 Don't have to rehearse so much. That's very, very good. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's uh, well, in the last album, there were three uh, songwriters involved, and that is pretty new to me because uh, I've been involved with bands. Maybe I have two uh, songwriters, and uh, basically uh, almost just one. But but uh, three songwriters, you know, uh, that's that's something different, I think. Yeah, I guess that's news to me as well to to write the music and then just meet up in studio and record it without having uh, rehearsed it with the whole band, which I usually do with uh, my other bands. But uh, or when I come to think about it, we never do that. <laughs> we would never rehearse with uh, any band. But uh, <laughs> the writing process is different because we write se really separately, and um, I didn't have a, a clue what um, Stain's songs would be like before I had the pre-production of them in my hand and I think that will also be the case for the next album. Uh, we have no clue whatsoever what the other people are, are writing and what it will sound like so it's almost like a compilation. Yeah. On the social level as well uh, I think uh, this band is very different from uh, my other band uh, Trail of Tears because they are all, all of them, childhood friends, and they, they hang together 24, 24 hours a day, every day, every week, almost. But uh, we are kind of, uh, I think we, we have, uh, yeah, how can I say that? Women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> families and fucking yeah, jobs. Yeah. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, m most of most of the Green Carnation yeah, members nice. have their own families, and they don't have that social, uh, the same social needs as the Trail Tears guys. <laughs> we we have mean. a life; they don't. That's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to point out. <laughs> we need much more money, so we work. Yeah. What's the main difference for you from playing in Trail of Tears and the Second Eye and Green Carnation? The main difference that is that uh, I haven't uh, wrote any of the songs of uh, Green Nation. Yeah, I think that's the main uh, difference. Jot, what's the difference between playing in Capating Forest and Green Nation? The corpse paint? Among other things, yeah. And the tempo? We don't talk so much about shit in Green Nation. No. The, the humor, especially. We don't have uh, we don't have humor yeah, really. No. no, this is uh, <laughs> gray difference. gray shades. This is dead serious. We are, we are we are a very strong band. Yeah, we heard on the tour. Yeah, a very strong <laughs> band. <laughs> strong is the German word for fat, I think, or something. <laughs> when it comes to the weight in pounds, strong. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we are Norwegian yeah. for Christ's sake. I think no matter where, where you're from, uh, you're influenced by it in some way. But it's kind of hard to say in what way. I don't think uh, Green Carnation would make the same music if we were all from China, having grown up in China. If you or see Cameroon. Them. Yeah, yeah, Cameroon maybe. Or e different e Egypt. Rivers. Egypt maybe, yes, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps from New Zealand. Well, uh, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, you... Uh, you get influenced by, by, by the things you hear. 
and of course uh, radios around in Scandinavia they they play a lot of Scandinavian music but but uh but as a, uh, for us you know I think uh we uh, we have heard uh, the stuff uh, by others and go to the music store and hear new stuff so I I don't think when it, com it comes to 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 this age that we are in we are old now and uh, and now we are more you know he's not no but uh, we we're, we're more uh, soon to be dead we pick our music a little bit more, more now than than just listening to the radio and stuff, and uh, and so I don't think that uh, it's, I don't think it, it matters where you come from, you know. It's just you, you you find music you want to hear, and then you you hear it and explore new things, and and that you do in any parts and any of, of the world, I think. It's here we live, and I don't think uh, any of us has lived anywhere else, so the. Mm -hmm. Experience with uh, other countries is more of touring, vacations, and stuff like that. So I have lived in England, so that's why okay. I sound like oasis all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, it's pretty cold here in Norway. So I, I think uh, six months, you know, people stay indoors. So uh, there's not much cold. to do indoors, you know, winters except skiing, you know, ski indoors? jumps. Indoors, indoors, <laughs> no, outside, <laughs> indoors, <laughs> PlayStation, outside. and. You know, we, we don't we don't ski and we don't uh, skate and stuff. So it's just indoors and music. Yeah, and I think that the different backgrounds we have with the different musical influences uh, has a more bigger impact on Green Carnation's outcome than the nature we live in. Especially because I come from extreme music. Kjetil comes from pop music, church music, and Mr. Krummins. Smith Krummins. <laughs> Messer Smith. Yeah, something like that. What's your background musically? Oh, it's, uh, it's much uh, heavier metal music, of course, but uh, also. Uh, just let me just say jazz. Oh, Polish jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and Bjorn has played in a country band. And I've been out in the country, you know. <laughs> yeah. And Stain, what have you been doing? I've been horn, my, my chef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? I've been playing country music. I, uh, I've, been, um, I've been playing. Uh, me, me and Bjorn played a uh, country band, Moonshine, for you know, five, six years. Made a lot of money every yeah. day. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's the, what has the biggest influence on Green Connection's <coughs> outcome. It's the diversity of personalities and not the nature itself. The split personalities. <laughs> <laughs> the different parts of music come together as one. One with the earth. Yes, it yeah. ma makes it kind of interesting, I think. <laughs> Couldn't afford. <laughs> no. I've been. Uh, well, it's been. Uh, it was a uh, high school. It was a uh, music and drama, I think, and uh, dancing and drama and music in high school. You were a hell of a dancer, man. Yeah. <laughs> Private dancer. I am. <laughs> so uh, I don't think I don't, I don't think anybody have a uh, have any education in music because um, well Michael is doing no, he's music. now he's doing but you know we are 20 years older than him so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically I have one, one and a half years, years on on uh, university level or college level I don't know what it's called yeah. uh, and that's mainly classical singing I have two hours of uh, guitar lessons with his older brother. <laughs> Two hours. Actually, yeah. two hours. I couldn't afford more. False learner. <laughs> <laughs> Only discussions with other musicians. The kids don't go to school, we'll just sit home and drink and use drugs. Beers at the pub. You can learn a lot from beers. Self made. If it comes natural for me or for us, then perhaps we will do another album in a similar way. But um, I already have some ideas for a coming album, probably not the next one, but a future album. 
It will not be the s same, but it will be a major project, and um, maybe that will be the closest thing you can rely to when it comes to light of day, day of darkness. It's not possible for me to write an al another album be just because there's a big demand for it. It has to come natural for me or it won't work. Damn right. Of course, there's two very different things, playing live and doing the studio. In studio, we don't really think about what works out live. That's, I think that's a wrong way to, to record an album. But uh, when we first uh, did uh, Light of Day, Day of Darkness live, we actually had two synth players live with lots of samples and stuff like that. So we kind of almost created the same <laughs> Yeah, the same. Uh, it was the same. Production. Yeah, yeah. Ki mm -hmm. kind of. But uh, but the new album is more. I think it's that's that's uh, something else. Live, there's a whole. Uh, that's a different. Uh, how can I say it? It's a dif different atmosphere. More even more rock and roll atmosphere live to the new stuff, but. Uh, the light of day was more like the the albums, and it's of course we did, we were very. Uh, we d we weren't sure about how light of day was going to work out live because we'd been booked to Vakin, and o o we only played one gig before Vakin actually, and we were quite happy then that it really worked worked out live as well, because we didn't know before we had done it. Uh, but as I said. The Blessing in Disguise songs, we do more kind of live versions of them, I think. Yeah, uh, what we thought would be the, the most stressful thing to reproduce live, like Light of Day, Day of Darkness. Obviously, we do a more stripped down version uh, nowadays, but um, it's actually the most appreciated song we have in our live set today, and that wasn't something we believed when we schedule ourselves for the first gig with that album. So that came as a surprise to us. Yeah. But the, the the difference between working in the studio and playing live is can't be compared. The studio process is taking a long time and you have to work over and over again with the same parts and yeah, you get sick and tired of it and o often very boring. And for me, live is the almost the best thing with the playing in a band. The best thing is when it's good rehearsal. No audience, just a band playing a good rehearsal. That, that's, for me, the coolest. Sure. I think also, uh, uh, you know, a different aspect playing live in the studio. You work hard and all that, but at the same time you think about how the things will work out live when you do the recording. And uh, and it's kind of like uh, when you have worked hard, and this is kind of like what you get for doing a, a, an album. The reward. Go out play, and you play for people, and you get a response. That's kind of like yeah. A free beer. You feel mm. like yeah, this is this is what you want to do when you're on the stage, and when you're in the studio, you know you just it's, it's it's another part, but both of them are very important. You know if you want to to keep playing music and keep keep. Going around, yeah. Good reward of blood, sweat and tears. Yeah, another big difference between uh, live and uh, studio is that you don't see groupies hanging around the studio. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Do you see them hanging around at the nice studio? Also? <laughs> 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 you see them live? <laughs> yeah, but Light of Day was, was, uh, was a really complex thing, thing to do live, but I have to admit I have a dream that uh, maybe one day we could uh, Oh, yeah, that maybe one day we could uh, do Light of Day, Day of Darkness with an orchestra and a choir. That would be my biggest uh, trip, I guess. Yeah, and that was also was supposed to be the final question uh, that was sent to us by a fan, and that was asking us if we would do a tour in the future with Light of Day as a sole production. and. 
like uh, Hitler says, it's possible that we will do a full production of the song sometime in the future, but and if we do, and when we do it, then it would be real cool to reproduce it with a full orchestra and maybe a choir even and and like get some small children. Yeah, and lots of small children on stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a big fucking stage. Maybe a one time on the show. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe two. Or a massive tour bus. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest tour bus ever. <laughs> even bigger than the one we had on this on the previous European tour, I think. Uh, it's going to be a tour boat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that summons everything up for us today. And, and when it comes to Belgium, yeah, sure. <laughs>